Hi, it's Kim here, and I want to welcome you to Fit Girl Magic Podcast. And today, I want to talk. Uh, today, I want to talk about why you're stuck. You know, so many of us, you know, we get to that point in our fitness, and you know, we're doing all the things, we're eating right, we're working out, we're sleeping, we're managing our stress, and we're like, I still look in the mirror, and I'm like, I got nothing. Nothing is changing. Nothing is moving. And here's where you kind of hit that frustration wall and you say, screw it, I'm done, I'm out. And you know, you're off either seeking something else or you're off just, you just quit, you know? And you just sit down like a toddler and you're like, I'm not playing anymore. So I have 10 reasons why you're stuck and I have fixes, right? So I'm not just gonna throw out all the, here's why you're stuck. Good. Good luck with that. I'm going to give you reasons why you are stuck. Okay. So the first one is that we're going for the quick and fast fix. And, you know, we see it all over social media. We see it all over TV. Give me 30 days and I will give you the world. Okay. And you're like, 30 days? I want the world in 30 days. Sign me up. Pick me. And inevitably, it's something that is extreme and that it's not something that's possible for you to do past 30 days. And I always ask people, you know, what happens on day 31? And if we're in the first few days of said plan, I know I'm throwing air quotes and you're probably like, okay, I can't see that girl. Um, In the first five days of the plan, or if you're reading the plan, is there anything in there that you're like, "Mm, I'm not comfortable with that. You know, I'm not willing to give that up or if I do give that up it makes you you know witchy and cranky and just horrible to be around maybe it's not for you so the fix is um you know that the old story about the tortoise and the hare who won this who won the race the tortoise right slow and steady I've said multiple times and I'll say multiple times again you are not Amazon Prime and your body is not going to, to be delivered in two days, okay? Or your prime day. My prime day is Friday, so I'm not gonna get my body, my, my best body by Friday. It's just not going to happen. So here's where I challenge you to, you know, we know the things we're doing that, are, that we do, or the things that we're doing that are doing great and the things that can be improved. So I would say pick one thing. Pick one meal and clean it up. Pick breakfast and clean it up. If you're swinging by Starbucks and you're getting your, you know, mocha loca laca and you're getting your, you know, uh, scone or your banana bread or whatever, maybe that's the, you clean up your breakfast. Maybe if you are already eating clean, great. Then I want you to look at how many, how many vegetables are you eating? Are you getting in any good fats? And I'm not talking just olive oil and almonds, okay? That's what I want you to think about. So, you know, are you going for the quick fix? And if you are, you know, really take a big hard look at what that quick fix is asking you to do in that short period of time. And is that something that's sustainable for you? The next piece is that people are always, it's, it, you know, we vilify food groups. You know, I remember when I first got into this, um, you know, started looking at health and nutrition and, you know, buying self magazine and shape magazine. It was all about low fat, no fat. And fat was going to make you fat. And then we've, we've have slowly, you know, turned the tide with like the Mediterranean diet and looking at all the people who live around the Mediterranean and they eat fat all the time. Right. And then now with the whole keto thing and the whole, you know, Atkins, um, AKA, which I call the new keto, um, that has revolutionized the way we think about fat. And so before it was like no carbs and it was no fats and it was no fruits and no soy, no dairy, no, 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 no. And I don't know about you, but when you tell me no, I want it big time. I want it badly when you tell me no. And so what the one of the things I always challenge my clients is that no one ever got fat eating too much um, protein. No one ever said, oh, 
I had this chicken and oh my god, I just like I just couldn't stop eating the chicken. I'm sorry, I just couldn't stop. I, I had like five chickens. Like no one ever has ever said that to me. No one's ever said, oh, I had like 400 pounds of broccoli and I don't know. It just I'm sorry. I just it, it just triggered me. No one has ever said that by whole natural foods. Okay, so I want you to really start looking at your nutrition and making sure you're getting in that those whole natural foods um, and getting in variety. You know. I have a client who eats the same thing over and over and over again and then she goes on vacation and she loses her stuff. And it's because she eats the same flavor profiles all the time. And when she goes on vacation, her flavor profiles get altered because she has different things. And she goes cuckoo for cocoa puffs because her brain's like, oh my God, this stuff is fantastic. How can we have more? I want more. And so I want you to really think about how do we add variety. And I'm a big fan of Pinterest. I go on Pinterest every weekend before I go to the grocery store and I put chicken recipes or I put salmon recipes and I just, and I, and I find recipes that are easy. I'm not Martha Stewart, nor do I try to be Martha Stewart. I want it to be simple and easy. I should be able to eat my, you know, from start to finish. I'm, I'm going to give you max, max 40 minutes. Okay. So that's, that's uh, tip number two. Tip number three, your exercise choices. Oops. Your exercise choices. And so for women, we mostly will choose cardio, right? We have a lot of cardio queens and, um, you know, uh, one of the gyms I work at, you walk in and like the whole floor is just cardio. The first floor is all cardio and the bottom floor is all strength. And the machine, every machine is just like filled to the brim, right? People are running, there's a wait list going and you know, cardio feels good, right? You know, everyone's getting these Peloton bikes because it feels good to sweat and the endorphins get going and the serotonin's flowing and it's just like, you know, wow. But I'll tell you, cardio is short lived. And for all, for us ladies, we need the strength training. You know, we need the strength training twofold. One, for osteoporosis, right? When we strength train, um, the muscle pulls on the bone. And when the muscle pulls on the bone, that helps us to have nice, strong bones. And the stronger our bones, the more we are, with less prone we are to osteoporosis, okay? The second piece is that um, in an anti-aging process, we lose anywhere from three to 5% of our muscle mass as we age. So after we age 35-ish, it's a natural phenomenon. So, you know, you can't be like, oh, it's not gonna happen to me. No, it is gonna happen to you, it happens to everyone, but how you can stem the tide is strength training. And when I say strength training, I'm talking you got to lift heavy stuff. It can't be these two and three pound weights. Like you need to like feel the last few reps of your workout feel heavy with good form. You feel you, I want to feel some type of burning. I want to feel some type of um, exertion in my muscles. Plus, um, when you do lift weights, you know, cardio, I get that quick cardio, uh, quick calorie burn but with weight I get a little bit of an afterburn so the weight the weight um, it's called epoch exercise pokes exercise pokes oxygen consumption that's gonna last anywhere from 24 to 48 hours after I work out so I'm getting like a two-day burn after a one-day workout where cardio it gets in it gets out and it doesn't last okay the the fourth one is underestimating or overestimating my food. And one of the things I always challenge my, my clients is to send me a food log. With a food log, and it's not that we, I, as a coach, I'm not judging, right? I'm not being like, she's horrible. I'm like, okay, she's telling me what her challenges are. And I'm looking at it to say, how can I help her through these challenges? That's how I look at it. And how can I help her to make a tweak here or a tweak there to help her get to where she wants to be? So that's what the food journal is. But then as, as you're creating the journal, food journal, as I create my own food log, it helps me to identify where I stumbled. 
right? Not where I went wrong, where I stumbled. And so I can see, you know, on a food log that, oh, I waited too long to eat. So that just set up the hungry horrors. Or I um, didn't eat enough food. Um, and so that's what set off the whole chain, chain of events. So that I'm able to, you know, play my own game of CSI. And the same thing when I have a great day. I'm like, all right, so this is what this is what a great day looks like. You know, because I had, you know, enough protein here, had enough, you know, vegetables here, had enough this, 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 and this, it the stars aligned for me and everything worked out awesome. So that's where I want that's why I have a food log because it is, you know, um, a case file, right? You know. I love CSI, I love true crime things, and in order to know what's going on, you gotta know where you've been. You gotta know how the scene, how the crime occurred. And so you need to be able to go back and, and look in the case file, and that's what a food log's all about. Um, stress. This one, I, I can't stress it enough, pun intended. So many women, we underestimate the stress that we're under, and that stress is even if it's low level even if you're like i don't really feel stressed out there is a um there is a consequence to your body you know a lot of us if you always have like that inflammation especially around your your midsection it could be you have low level stress and some of us have been so stressed out for so long that we don't even realize that we're stressed out that we just think that this is just how life is and one of the things I always challenge my clients to do is to press pause, you know, find moments in the day that it can just be about you. And I know many, you know, women have stressful jobs, stressful home situations. You know, they may be caring for aging parents um, while caring for children at the same time. You know, you just might have that job that is just like, a bear and you know no matter how many times you think the stressful period is over it continues to be stressful all right so one of the, the things I always tell people is that even if it's five minutes right a five minutes of like you sitting on the couch closing your eyes you um, the adult coloring books taking a walk in nature something that just helps you to kind of take that nice deep breath Something that helps get you out of your head, out of the moment. Because if you're trying to make any progress in your body and you are stressed to the max, it's just going to halt all changes in your body until you get that stress under control. And I know it's easier said than done. Um, I'm a recovering stress ball and it took me a while to realize that like I can't control everything and that there are... I can only do what, what it's humanly possible. And at the end of the day, there's always going to be something on my to-do list, like it or lump it. And all I can ask myself at the end of the day, did I do the best I could do that day? That's it. And the other thing is ask for help. You know, also say no, right? You know, there's certain things that might be out of your purview. You know, maybe you don't need to bake brownies for the bake sale. Maybe you can buy them or maybe you can tap out of doing that completely right so it's just really start to think about those types of things and I forgot to share that as I'm going through these if you're trying to write them down don't worry I've created a, uh, a sheet for you that you can easily find that and um, I'll put uh, you, you can fi easily find that on my website um, and it's uh, fabfitsquad.com slash live TV and you can find um, the this uh, action guide the the 10 steps all written out with the fixes right on my website. All right. So the other thing, sleep, right? These are the two things that I feel if, if many of us focused on, we could start to see some progress in our bodies. And sleep does a body good. Um, there was a recent study that showed that if you sleep less than seven hours a night um, and you're trying to lose weight, trying to you know build some muscle, that less than seven hours, you are eating into your muscle. If you get over seven hours, you, you know, is that's like the kind of the tipping point to be able to start building some good quality muscle. So, you know, like I said back, you know, a few moments ago, 
I want to build muscle because muscle not only helps me to help fight the aging process, but two, muscle helps me burn more calories at rest. So the more muscle I have on my body, the more calories I burn at rest, okay? So one of the big things I always tell people for bedtime is you have to set a bedtime. And I don't want you to think that because I set a bedtime, because I'm going to bed at nine o'clock, I'm gonna magically go to bed at nine o'clock. No, I have to start to signal my body it's time to go to bed. So I can't be up watching TV and then turn up the TV and like, you know, lay, go and lay in bed and expect to be down in 15 minutes. If you are, rock on with your bad self. But if you aren't, that's, that's normal. So I say, you know, have a bedtime routine. Think about kids, right? Kids have, there's tubby time, then there's a story, then there's a glass of water. There's a whole procedure to put a kid to bed. Do the same thing for you. You know, I have a procedure, you know, I, I go to bed, I, you know, read 10 pages in my book, I meditate. Like there's a, there's a, you know, a process of like me being here to like coming down into my body's now saying, okay, now it's time for us to chill out. Now it's time for us to like, you know, start to think about going to bed. And is it gonna be overnight? No, my love, it's not gonna happen for you overnight. But if I start down these processes, I start down these habits, it eventually will start. And you know, I know for many women over 40, sleep is elusive, right? You know, some of us got those hot flashes going and you know, the stress of our jobs and maybe we still have young kids that are coming in and out of our beds. So I really want you to think about, you know, having that process for you. What could that sleep process look like for you? The seventh thing is natural foods. So the FDA does not regulate what goes on the front of the package. I could say anything on the front of the package. It's, you know, literally the, that area that says, you know, the, the carbs, the, the, the macronutrients and the macro and the micronutrients, and then the ingredients that the federal government regulates like nobody's business. You know, if it says it has flaxseed in it, it better have one flaxseed in it. <laughs> so, but on the front, it could say all natural. And all natural is a very fluid word. And many of us, because we've been trying to eat better, trying to do better for our bodies, we see natural, we're like, all right, throw it in the cart. And natural could be anything, right? It could be anything. Natural flavoring, that's not flavorings from nature. That is a flavoring that's made in the lab. So it's a bunch of chemicals made to taste like chicken. It's a bunch of chemicals made to taste like beef. So when you see natural flavorings, that's you know the food industry's way of enhancing the, the end product, okay? So I really want you to, when you flip it over, you know, don't be you know fooled by that shiny packaging. Flip it over, read the ingredients. If you don't understand the ingredients, leave it on the shelf, okay? Because, you know, the more crap we put into our body, the more our bodies have to process. And our bodies, there's a lot of things that are set, sent to the holding tank because it doesn't know what it is. And a lot of it is the chemical additives that we have, find in our food. And so the basic premise that will probably never go away if it flies, if it swims, you can dig it up or you can pluck it, eat it all day long. And you know, I'm gonna give you my top four food groups that I recommend that you um, remove from your from your diet, okay? That that are quote unquote natural. Almond milk. I know everyone's like, almond oh, milk, I love it. I think it tastes like watery crap, but that's fine. <laughs> that's my opinion. Almond milk, unless you make it yourself, it has more fillers than actual almonds. So you wanna look at the, the ingredients and it should say almonds. It shouldn't have anything extra in it, okay? And there are a few, uh, few brands out there that do do that. The second is deli meat. 
right? You're like, oh, I'm feeling good. I'm, I'm having turkey. Well, if I buy turkey from the deli, unless you see it that it's carved right off the bird, right off that bone, turkey, uh, any deli meat is typically added sugars, salts, and fillers to like give it um, longevity and also make it, you know, taste, taste better. The other thing is um, granola. Granola is just it started out as like great, and then they added sh and then they add sugar, even if it's natural cane sugar, brown rice sugar. It's all it's still sugar that they're adding to it. So, um, you know, I see a lot of times um, those um, yogurts with fruit and granola, and I will tell you that 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 yogurt is probably um, has sugar in it. Then you add the granola, so you're just pretty much eating a sugar bomb by the time you're done. And then the, the other thing is dried veggies and fruits. The process, unless you do it yourself, the process typically adds in um, fats and sugars, again, to make them taste good. <laughs> All right, so I want you to really start educating yourself about what it is that you're putting in your body. I don't want you to become the no police and the like, I can't eat, you know, blah, blah, blah. Like, I don't want you to be that. But I do want you to be more mindful about what you put in your body so that you know, I've, I'm a big believer in the good, better, best model. So it's like, you know, what's the best thing for my body? What's a better thing for my body? And what's a good thing for my body? All right. Um, this, this right here, emotional eating, we all fall victim to it. It's, I want to say it's conditioned in our society. Um, in our society, you know, you got a good grade, eat something. Um, you know, your boyfriend broke up with you, eat something, you know, you are celebrating, you're, you're depressed, it's Tuesday, you know, anything to not feel the feelings, have something to eat, right? And so what I want you to start doing is instead of bypassing it through with food, can you start to, you know, before you reach for that food, can you start to say, you know, pause, say, am I hungry? Am I angry? Am I lonely? Am I tired? Is this, are there feelings that I'm trying not to feel before I reach for whatever it is? Because how I tell, how I tell my clients is that if you're truly hungry, you'll reach for broccoli. If you are, you know, in an emotional state, you're looking for comfort. So you're going to, you know, go up for those comforty type foods versus find the broccoli and find the Brussels sprouts, right? And my last thing is drinking your calories, okay? And it's really easy in this in this day and age, right, with all the fun coffee drinks that are out there, all the fun tea drinks, and all the fun smoothies and green juices. Yes, they're good. Yeah, there's not, they're, they taste delicious. And I wanna say 70% of the things they put into it actually are, good they're great ingredients but it's a lot of it is just a, the they add the add things to make it taste good to add it to make it more palatable for you you know so I want you to as you are drinking the drinks be more mindful you know I live here in Massachusetts and so in Massachusetts um, you have to put uh, when you order at a restaurant you have to put the calories on so well, I'm, you know, I go back and forth about, you know, strictly following calories. I, I like it that I like it at those type of places, especially the drinking places, because we sometimes forget that, you know, that mocha that I absolutely adore has a lot of empty calories in it. And so I really want you to start thinking about the foods that you are drinking, um, you know, because you know, drinks have become social, you know, oh, let's get a green juice. Well, and you know, it's healthy, but let's really look at what's in that green juice, right? You know, um, and it's something that I should be having every single day. Um, how many calories are in that green juice? Um, oh, I'm having a cappuccino, but it has almond milk in it. So it makes it better. Okay. You know, still let's start looking and exploring what are in those because for the most part, the, the calories that we drink, they're probably, I'm gonna say 70% empty calories that don't really serve our service, service our body really well. Um, 
And like I said, this is all going to be up on my website. So um, it is fabfitsquat.com slash live TV. And if you go there, you'll be able to uh, download um, these these 10 reasons why you keep holding on to the weight. And, you know, I want you to start as in like any tips and hacks I give you. Listen to this again. You might need to. And that's fine. Listen to this again and then go through and say, What's possible for you? Because I don't want you to be like, I've got to do all 10 of these right now. No, that's not what I'm saying. I'm saying pick something that feels easy. And once that is like, you got it on lock, move to the next thing. Because when you try to do all the thing, a confused mind does nothing. And I don't want you to be confused. I want you to be a woman of action. I want you to be a woman who just says, you know what? I've reached the end of my rope. I can't handle it anymore. I just gotta get stuff done and just get stuff done. And getting stuff done is taking, putting one foot in front of the other. All right, Magic Makers, I adore you. Thank you so much. I love to hear your feedback. So definitely hit me up on the socials. You can find me at Kim Jefferson Coach on Instagram. You can find me at Kim Barnes Jefferson on Facebook. And I appreciate everything about you. Have an awesome evening.